Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Demo Fleas. Today I've got a few tips and tricks I'd like to share with you. Um, this first one's gonna be about looping animation. Uh, you know, flag animations, if you if you use Cinema for a while, uh, flag animations are gonna be pretty commonplace. You'll, you'll run into them quite a bit for motion graphics. Um, you know, you could render this out and take the clip and dissolve it in After Effects. That's one way to do it. Uh, another way, in if you want to keep it inside Cinema, is to use maybe motion clips. Um, you might, uh, you know, there's there's several different ways to do it, uh, and this could this technique could really apply to uh, not just flag animations, but anything that might loop or undulate, like uh, ocean waves or a character walk, a character run, something like that. Um, but you know, uh, let's use this as an example. So, as you know, inside the cloth tag, there's a, a cache feature here, um, but it's pretty limited in that uh, once you cache it, you can really only offset the beginning of the simulation, um, and you can't do anything else with it. So, uh, we're gonna go to the character tags point cache tag, and we're gonna move it to the end here. So basically what this is gonna do is gonna collect any information about this mesh uh, that's going on with it. So, you know, it's first seeing the claw tag, and so this claw tag is gonna drive that the mesh's points uh, into the simulation. So as we go here to the end, what we'll do if we store state, we can calculate and collect that information into memory. So this is basically the same functionality as the uh, cloth tags cache um, feature. Um, and once it's saved, you can actually, you know, just to show you that it's actually in there, you can delete that cloth tag and um, there it is. It's all cached in there inside this tag. So what's special about this tag is all these features down here. Uh, you can loop things. Number two, if we say double this to 400, at frame 200, it starts over. So not quite useful for our loop, but um, this next part right here, this blend feature, this is where it's at right here. So at the end of 200, it's gonna start over from the beginning. If you bump this up to say something like 20%, it's gonna overlap the two clips from the beginning and the end by 20%. And so instead of cutting at frame 200 now, you're seeing uh, a mixture of the start and end frames of the cache. So that's one way to get like the loop going. Um, so obviously you can run this to 100 or however long you need this thing infinitely to loop. Um, but if you're going to render this out, obviously as, as footage in, in After Effects, you'd only need um, just a, a portion of this. Just you, the, the blend, this overlap is really the most important part. Um, so you know we're we're now taking this uh, original simulation of the claw tag and maximizing it. And you could go even further by going, uh, you know, if you needed to make a bunch of these flags, um, let's duplicate this and, um, you know, offset this to 30. Maybe it starts a little later. And we want this to play a little faster. That's what the scale feature is. So you can double time the playback of that cache animation. And so it's the same simulation, but now you're repurposing it and getting a little bit more mileage out of that. Um, and to go the opposite way, you can slow this down and play it at 20%. Let's bring this back to zero. Here we go. So now it's just gonna play this, uh, you know, speed it up, slow it down, what have you. So it's really just a really versatile way to kind of maximize a, a simulation um, and loop things as well. So um, this next piece is going to be uh, about dynamics and, and you know, let's just take a, for instance, we want to, I'm going to go into a side mode, side view here and open up Cappuccino. If you haven't messed with this, this is really like the motion sketching of, of Cinema 4D if you're an After Effects user. Uh, let's start this over here. And in real time, I'm going to go to the beginning and start animating this thing like it's going to hit this bam. All right, so I've just drawn a bunch of keyframes on here. And you're like, cool. Um, 
really I wanted to hit at the big not 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 the side we wanted to hit the center so uh, I don't want to redo all that animation so I'm just gonna um, select my sphere and I've got this animation path and wouldn't it be cool if I could just move this animation path over to the right place um, instead of having to redo the animation or move individual keyframes um, if you go over here to tools go to mode and hidden down here animation there's a lot of stuff down here that's <laughs> take a look see at this stuff because this is this is one of the most important ones I think animation um, and now you can uh, rewind to the beginning and then your uh, move scale and rotate become move scale and rotate for the entire animation path you can rotate it and have it go at a side uh, you can scale it so this is this becomes really powerful um, all right didn't quite nail it so maybe it's not super in the center the thing about this is wherever you are parked on your animation path that becomes the center point or the pivot point for your animation path so I'm gonna park right here and rotate and now I'm rotating the animation path from the center uh, if I go to the beginning I'm rotating the animation path from the that anchor point <clears throat> so say we like that oh, still not in the center because we rotated let's move it here that's pretty silly okay but we like it um, but you know what we'd like it even better says the client if we ran in reverse we want to see this whole thing come together and uh, just like that last animation we just showed um, we want to re uh, time this using um, our point cache tag but for whatever reason this is not working why is it not working that should work so maybe we use our connect object friend this magic object will just hook this up to the cloner and maybe that will take a point cache tag nope still not working um, the reason being this point cache tag really likes to have things that are uh, editable meshes this cloner is it's all procedural this cube obviously I can you know size this up still um, I can still change out how many uh, you know I want fewer cubes in this uh, grid here so this is all parametric it's all live and the, with the connect object the simple trick you just have to add a correction deformer to the connect object and put the point cache on that um, you do want to make sure the uncheck weld because you'll get some freaky results if you don't uh, but now that point cache tag you can store the state and everything comes alive and so we'll calculate awesome and if we run it in reverse now minus 100 so our balls playing forward but our simulation is running backwards so this is a really easy way to get this uh, stuff to you know come together and form again um, but with the flexibility of uh, you know being able to retime it um, as fast or as slow as you want so uh, this point cache tag is very very I think it's 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 one of the most versatile tools inside cinema 4d um, but you know maybe uh, one other thing I wanted to cover real quick was the uh, back to our sphere this one kind of uh, this one's kind of cool I drew this out with cappuccino and kind of, you know, mimicked a, my, my own uh, bouncy ball dynamics and stuff. Um, but if, you know, I've got all these keyframes here and it becomes very, very difficult to manipulate any of this stuff if I wanted to go through and um, I can move everything as a whole uh, with the animation path trick using the animation mode. Um, I can also go in through here and tweak each individual uh, keyframe, but that's you know what if I wanted more kind of uh, 
be kind of cool if there was like a magnet tool that you could use for these points. Um, well, there's not a magnet tool, but there is, if we go here and uh, into the F-curve mode, really all I'm doing here is going to, I'm just going to tweak um, these keyframes. There is something called reduced modification mode. And so if you enable this, you get these points. The original curve kind of gets highlighted or um, it's screenshotted in the background. I can no longer edit it. Uh, what does show up here is this um, other modification curve. I can add points to this, and this is cool because um, if you go here to the modification type, we can uh, adjust the curve and add points to this thing. And now I'm bringing up, you know, with three keyframes instead of, you know, whatever, 50 keyframes. I'm, I'm, I'm altering and manipulating these keyframes. And so at any point in time, you can go through and add or delete or just it, it becomes kind of like a, a Bezier curve control for your animation path. <clears throat> and say we, we're, like, we're liking that and we're cool with that, um, you know, you can move this thing still. Uh, and I want to taper it off. I want this part to actually start lower uh, and end up higher. You can do that or if you want it to happen gradually or, you know, not gradually. There's that. So you can really tweak out your animation paths um, with uh, just this reduced modification curve. Um, you can scale things too, you can um, squash it, you add your own points, and really just, um, it's almost like the, like a, like a, a, a mesh, uh, smoothing tool or a brush tool rather um, and using this to affect uh, a bunch of keyframes so this will hopefully save you some time you know instead of having to rework animation and, and go through an in each individual tweaking of keyframes you know save yourself the trouble and go back here and, and, and uh, play around with the reduced modification mode um, so yeah that's that I hope uh, this has been a uh, helpful bunch of uh, tricks for you and uh, you, hopefully you guys can use that in your workflow uh, I'd love to see what you guys come up with and uh, if you have any questions or comments shoot me uh, some comments down below or uh, tweet at me I'm on Twitter at Demofleez D-E-M-A-F-L-E-E-Z and uh, hope to see you guys next time until then take care <laughs>